Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today I'm going to show you how the New Calculus handles the derivative um, in a very simple way. And I now produced videos in the past about this, but today's video is going to be even simpler than all the past videos that have been produced. So let's begin. Now, the new calculus integral is derived directly from the new calculus derivative. And you see it stated there. F prime of C is equal to this finite difference, okay, where C is the point of tangency. And now in the new calculus, the area or integral is derived directly from that formula. So... <clears throat> There is no need for the absolute nonsense of infinite sums and all sorts of other rot that you find in the mainstream calculus. And so N and M are horizontal distances from the point of tangency X, or in this case, C. Okay, and let's see how it works in the following diagram. So if you have a diagram like that, this green point here is the point of tangency and m is this distance, and n is this distance on the right, okay? Uh, they are both horizontal distances from the point of tangency to the endpoints of a parallel secant line to the tangent line, okay? Now, online you may have read comments by really stupid professors such as Jackie Hazinger or anybody else uh, that this is nothing but a finite difference. No, it's not because M and N don't have to be equal and they're usually not equal for most functions, right? And so before me, no one in the history of humanity realized that there was a special relationship between the point of tangency and these horizontal distances for any parallel secant, okay? I was the first to realize this, and the new calculus derivative was born out of this. And of course, the next step to, towards finding uh, the area was pretty obvious, okay? And the area is just simply the arithmetic mean, which is this f prime of c, which I'll explain in a moment, multiplied by the interval width, okay? So m plus n is the interval width, and fc is the length of the arithmetic mean. All right, so, um, and of course, in the mainstream, it's written like this. It's called the integral from C minus M to C plus N of F prime X DX. Now, let's see how this all works. So, the new calculus derivative was realized from the mean value theorem, and most of you have seen this expression here. F prime of C is equal to FB minus FA. And normally in the mainstream, they'll tell you, oh, there's a point C such that a parallel uh, tangent line, such that a tangent line is parallel to some secant. And that's not the remarkable part of it, by the way. The remarkable part uh, is that there is a relation between the horizontal distances, as you see down here, M, N, and the point of tangency. Okay. And so... Uh, when we find the derivative at this green point, which is 4, it's uh, pretty important, as you'll see in a moment, because that helps us to find the area uh, under, the, under the curve of the derivative, okay? So this, this point here will help us to find the area, as you'll see in a moment. Now, uh, the derivative is this light blue function, and this is f, okay? And so 4 is the arithmetic mean of all the vertical line lengths in the shaded region. And, and so the area of the shaded region is just 4 times the interval width, which is this bottom number here, right? And this is how we do it. Uh, the arithmetic mean is this y ordinate 4, and the interval width, which is m plus n, m plus n, or this interval width gives us an area which is 4.34 whatever and as you see here this area here is the same as this area and it doesn't matter how we move the secant line okay so we'll always get the correct area and you can check that by 
comparing this value to this value here. This has been determined by the software, and this here is determined by taking the product of these two arithmetic means, the f prime of c and the interval width. Okay, and of course the mainstream definition is just given by this. It's just the integral from one point six to two point three of the derivative function, but it turns out to be the same as what I have here. Okay, so it turns out to be exactly the same as the new calculus definition for integral, which is just f prime of c times m plus m. Now f prime of c can be found from the new calculus derivative, and this is the relation. So the, the area is this f prime of c times the interval width. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, the, these two curves are shown here. This is the antecedent or the primitive function or the antiderivative, and this light blue one here is the derivative. And it doesn't matter how you move this, okay? Now remember, if you're evaluating areas, you must keep the areas at the bottom of the curve separate from the top. So if you do this, they're not going to be equal, okay? And, and uh, well, this particular evaluation here doesn't really give you the area on top or the bottom. It's actually a nonsense number because 2.4021 is, is the arithmetic mean of numbers or ordinates that include both negative and positive. So ideally, you should work out the, the top part and then add the bottom part to it. Now the bottom part will be negative because an arithmetic mean down here is always negative. Right, now the mean value theorem was, will also work for points of inflection. There is a, po a point of inflection here, and the mean value theorem doesn't care about point of inflections, about points of inflection. So this here is a very simple uh, explanation of the relationship in the new calculus between the derivative definition, which is this, and the integral definition, <coughs> excuse me, which is this. Okay, and it's a lot simpler than the nonsense that you find in mainstream calculus. Um, here you have the product of two arithmetic means, and here you just have uh, a lot of theory which is based on infinity, infinitesimals, and nonsense. And of course, you're given tons of epsilon, epsilon delta proofs to make you feel that it's rigorous. But it's not rigorous, as I have explained in many other videos, and the epsilon delta uh, arguments are not proofs, they're very finitions, okay? And they're circular because they assume that the derivative exists and that a limit exists. And of course, they also assume that real numbers exist, which is false. There is no such thing as a real number. Well, I encourage you to download my free ebook, okay? And also to become a subscriber <clears throat> and to share news of my channel with your friends. I have many enemies in the mainstream and they've desperately tried to hide this information from you also remember to click like because there are many who will come to my site and click the down arrow just so that uh, when you do searches it doesn't appear but you do want others to learn this knowledge that you have just learned if there's anything you didn't understand about the video leave me a question in the comment section and I will try to answer it when I can. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and it will, that it has been a lot simpler than all the previous ones. I will also provide a link to the applet that I use so that you can play around with it if you want to and uh, also a link to the free ebook which is the most important mathematics book ever written. So, till next time, my name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. <coughs> Goodbye.